There are many ways to roast a turkey, but you often have to give up convenience in order to have it all. That gorgeous Norman Rockwell looking turkey with perfectly cooked white and dark meat and a killer gravy. But could we have both convenience and perfection? I say yes. All right. But we're going to have to get there. <laughs> so we're starting with a 12 pound turkey. And if you look at a turkey, it's a terrible shape for roasting. Yeah, it's really lumpy. Right? It's lumpy. All the meat that dries out really quickly is on top. All the dark meat, which can go for longer, is on the bottom. So a lot of times we end up flipping, going back and forth, breaking it down. We didn't want to do any of that. Mm. We wanted to keep this as simple as possible. No flipping the bird. I agree with not flipping the bird as much as you possibly can. Especially on Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start with first removing the giblets and the neck, which are inside here. So we're going to save these and actually use these later in the gravy, so we don't want to ditch them. We're glad they're in here, but we want them out of the turkey for the roasting. I have four tablespoons of kosher salt here and four teaspoons of sugar. We're going to actually salt this bird. Now, the salt does a lot of things. It seasons. It also moves into the muscle fibers and helps them retain moisture, makes them a little more tender. Sugar does a lot of those same things, a little bit less effectively, but it also adds some sweetness, which we like. And we're going to put it on the turkey, but it needs to go under the skin, which means I'm going to separate the skin from the meat a little turkey bit. Turkey glove. Turkey glove, yes. Let's just go in, kind of knock out that membrane. So I do this side with my right hand, but then when I want to do this leg, I go in with my left. <laughs> and that way I can kind of move this back and forth. So you like a turkey glove on both hands. I do, yes. So in addition to allowing us to get the salt and sugar right on the meat, this also makes a little air pocket, right? Mm -hmm. And that means that we can get more fat draining out and we can get this crisper as well. And I also like to actually go around on this side here and separate a little bit on this side. That's a full body massage. <laughs> full body massage. Okay, that's great. And while I'm over here, I'll start here. We're looking to get about four teaspoons under each breast and two teaspoons on each leg. Even distribution is what we're looking for. We developed this recipe using diamond crystal kosher salt, which measures slightly different than other brands of kosher salt. So if you're using a different brand, you can go to our website for more information. So for the rest of this, we're gonna go inside the cavity. We're gonna need to put this in the fridge for 24 to 48 hours. Before I do that, I'm gonna truss the legs. And I like to kind of go through and under. There's probably some sailor's knot here going on that I don't know about. <laughs> so the last thing I'm gonna do is tuck these wings back. They're a little bit more resilient than on a chicken, so mm -hmm. you gotta use a little bit more muscle on them. Beautiful. Ooh, that's shaping up. Shaping up, all right, so let's go over onto here. And we're gonna put this in the fridge uncovered so we get extra dehydration on the outside, which leads to better browning. So this turkey's been on vacation. It's just been <laughs> hanging out in the fridge for about 48 hours. The skin almost looks like leather. It's so dried out. Really dry. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. I know it doesn't look great right now, but I can see it in the future, and I know this is going to be good. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is just kind of pat any remaining moisture on there, and we should be pretty dry at this point. All right, great. So now we're going to make a little paste that's going to go on the exterior of the bird to help with browning. So I've got one teaspoon of baking powder here and one and a half teaspoons of oil. We're going to mix this together. Well, that's a weird paste. <laughs> it is a weird paste, right? <laughs> So we really need good browning because what we're actually gonna do is shield the breast for part of the cooking time. And it's not gonna brown very well during that time. Okay, so I'm just gonna paint this on. We're gonna go all over, but it's really important for the breast. So I know we very often use baking soda to help both meat and poultry brown, but we've never used baking powder. So why the difference here? We actually have used it in a very old recipe for a crisp roast chicken. And what it does is it acts in a similar way to soda. It's not as alkaline, but you still get more browning because the pH is a little bit higher. It's also a salt, so it's gonna help draw more moisture out. And that's always a good thing in the oven. Okay, so that's good for the breast there. We're actually gonna make our shield now. This shield? Is a little bit of arts and crafts going on here. So we're just gonna make a foil shield that's roughly the same shape as the crown here. Now, as I mentioned before, turkeys are a horrible shape for cooking, right? <laughs> and all this meat really wants to dry out rapidly. So what we're gonna do is make this nice. I thought you were gonna make a paper airplane. You thought I was gonna put my head? <laughs> it does, it is a little bit like a paper airplane. So what we're gonna do is make this nice little shield here. So this might look a little silly, but this is saving us from having to flip the turkey part way through. Now, about 30 minutes ago, I put a baking stone in the oven. We're not making pizza. It's actually the key to making this recipe work. What we're basically doing is creating this huge heat sink in the oven. So we have the baking stone in there, and we have a roasting pan on top of it, and the whole setup has preheated for 30 minutes at 500 degrees. So it's very, very hot. When we put the turkey in right into the roasting pan, the dark meat is down. So it's gonna get a lot more heat. We've also shielded this, so it's extremely protected. So in the end, they come out at the same time. I gotcha. So preheated baking pan and a shield on the breast means you speed up the dark meat and slow down the white meat. Exactly. I'm with you. All right. And I have two tablespoons of oil. So we're gonna put that in the bottom of the pan. Oh, you can sticking. tell by how hot the pan is by that oil. It immediately just started to shimmer. Oh yeah, it's almost smoking. Very, very hot. So now I'm just gonna move these so I don't 
brush them with the turkey here. And pick up the bird right in. Ooh. Can you hear that? <laughs> Super loud. So we're gonna go back into the oven. We're gonna drop it down to 425 degrees and go for 45 minutes. Now that we've given the dark meat a really good jump start, we're gonna drop the oven temperature down to 325 degrees, remove that foil shield, and go until the breast register 165 degrees, and the thighs and legs are at 175. So it's been 90 minutes, and it definitely looks Ooh, good. That and smells a, good. Yeah, that bird's a looker. I know, it looks nice, right? So let's go into the breast. We're looking for 165, and we got it, nice, that's good. And we'll check in the dark meat. Great, we're done. Well done. Excellent. Perfectly done, not well done, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna grab it out if you wouldn't mind shutting that. You bet. Oh, beautiful. All right, so we're gonna transfer this over to our carving board here. I love watching people do this. <laughs> this Everyone the has part, their right? own way, and you got, so you have tongs and a wooden spoon. Yes, I'm doing most of the lifting with my tongs. And I like to just tip it, let those juices run out, because we can use those. All right, pop it Ooh. over here. That is a Norman Rockwell bird right there. Looks good, right? Yeah, that's a good looking one. We didn't have to break it down or anything. Mm, so this mm. is gonna sit and rest for at least 45 minutes. Sounds like a long time, but there's a lot of heat trapped in here, right? And so if we cut into it too soon, a lot of that juice is gonna come running out. So 45 minutes, you can even go up to an hour. So it gives you time to do other stuff, which we're gonna do. And I worried that the drippings were gonna burn in that preheated pan on that hot baking stove, yep. but they're gorgeous. That's gonna make some good gravy. Yeah, so what we're gonna do first is strain it through this fine mesh strainer here. I'm gonna use a spatula and just kinda scrape around, make sure everything's loosened up. That's good flavor right there. Mm -hmm. Oh, it smells good too. It smells like the holidays it, in here. It does. All right, so first we're gonna pass right through this fine mesh strainer. This way if there's any bits of skin, we get rid of that now. For a lump-free gravy. Lump-free gravy, yes, in many ways. Okay, so the next up is we're gonna put it into a fat separator. There's plenty of rendered fat in here, and we're gonna wanna use some of it, but not all of it. Great, so we're gonna let this sit for about 10 minutes, make sure it really fully separates out, and then it's time to make the gravy. Sounds good. So our turkey is still resting over there, mm -hmm. staying nice and warm, so we're gonna turn our focus on to the gravy. Ooh, almost as important as the turkey to me. Arguably, right? We're gonna start with the liquid that we took out of the pan, and now it's separated out into nice liquid underneath. So that's what we want to capture. This is kind of a cool, funky fat separator. So yeah, you that's... just hit this little lever and you get what was on the bottom. Mm, so the juices, the fatted juices are on the bottom and the fat has risen to the top. Exactly, so you can kind of just go until you see it change over. Great, there we go. Nice. So that's our juices. And then I'm gonna head right over this pan here. We're gonna use three tablespoons of this fat for our gravy. And that's some flavorful fat, so mm, that's gonna mm. lead to a really nice gravy. I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna heat this over medium-high heat. And now we finally come back to our neck and our giblets. So I'm glad we saved those. They're gonna provide a lot of flavor. Okay, that's nice and hot. We'll get our giblets to get nice and brown. Okay, these are nice and brown all over. Got some good fond on there. These are gonna go back in once we get all our liquid in there, so they'll infuse a bit more. We'll take them out for now. We're gonna drop this down to medium. Now we're gonna go in with our aromatics. I have a small onion that we got minced up here. One small carrot that's sliced thin, so we get lots of flavor out of it. Also five sprigs of parsley and two bay leaves. Okay, so we're gonna cook this until everything is nice and softened in about five to seven minutes. Mmm, that's starting to smell like gravy. Yeah, they're just getting kind of nice and melted. They're gonna blend right into the gravy. So next we're gonna go in with our flour. We're gonna do a traditional roux. Stir this around until all that flour is coated in fat. Okay, that looks great. Now we're gonna add in our drippings. Mm. Nice and dark, tons of flavor in here. That's the liquid gold right there. That's the liquid gold. So the trick to adding this in, we wanna go really slowly. Some seriously meaty drippings. Mm -hmm. Did I ever tell you about the first time my daughter tried gravy? No. Well, my daughter's quite young, and so she wasn't really into sauces when she was little, so we always put in a little ramekin off to the side, and gravy's kind of dark and scary looking, but she took one bite, and her face lit up. She threw her hands over the air, and she said, winner! <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Okay, so that's 
pretty well mixed in there. It's easier to make sure that you get all the flour with less liquid in there. If you fill it up all the way, then you're trying to find all those little bits and mm -hmm. clumps. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in with three and a quarter cups of water. And I'm gonna thin out that really thick paste with this. And again, a little slow here. It really pays off. All right, once it's smooth, I'm going a little faster there. Get the rest in. And finally, we're gonna go with a quarter cup of white wine. Okay, so our giblets are gonna go back in. Now that we got the, our liquid in there. Mm-hmm, and that's gonna add serious flavor to the gravy. Serious flavor, it's gonna be great. We're gonna bring this up to a simmer, and we're gonna go for about 10 minutes. We'll see it thicken a lot. It's gonna reduce a little bit during that time, too, so concentrate a bit more, too. Sounds good. How's it smell? Winner. Winner, all right. <laughs> So that's been 10 minutes. I'm gonna turn off the heat and give a quick taste here. So those drippings were pretty salty and that's why we use water instead of store-bought broth. So here, you really wanna taste before you season. Salt's good. Maybe a little bit of pepper. So now I'm gonna remove the neck and then we're gonna pass it through the strainer. Now this can be your serving bowl. You can go right from here to the table. And because there's lots of good flavor in all this stuff, we're gonna kind of push it through a little bit with our spatula. Make sure we get everything out. Pretty lump free. Yeah, it looks very silky. Very silky. So Here, we're I'll, I'll take that serving. for you. I'll take I got <laughs> you it. You can't have that. That's not soup, <laughs> Julia. All right, great. So now it is time to carve the bird. I'm gonna start with the dark meat here, and I'm gonna cut the skin right down the side. It's pretty crispy, actually. Okay, so I'm going down here onto the thigh, and I just make small little cuts until I see that bone pop out right there, right? Yep. Go right in around that, and that will come out right for you. So transfer this over here, and I find it's easiest to go in and excise the meat a little bit off of the wishbone first, and then I start up on the breast here, use that whole blade, and be nice and close to this breastbone. But you can start peeling it back. You can do a little peel like that, opens it up so you can see right in. Peel it back. Right in there. Well done. I hate skimpy little slices of turkey where you get none of the skin. Right? Oh yeah? So I like leaving them a little bit thicker like this. Are you a white or dark or both? Yes. Yes, okay, very <laughs> good answer. Get your nice piece of breast there. A couple pieces of thigh. Ooh, that looks good. All right, a little gravy for you? Yes, please. Mm. Mm-hmm. Good? It's awesome. Mm. The meat is really nicely seasoned. Mm -hmm. It's juicy. It's not that dried out old turkey that you sometimes get. It's classic, right? Mm -hmm. Classic flavor. Dan, this turkey is awesome. Thank you. And the you. gravy, winner. Not too bad, right? No, <laughs> winner. winner. For the most foolproof Thanksgiving turkey recipe, rub sugar and salt underneath the skin and refrigerate the turkey uncovered for a day or two before roasting. Our secret to even cooking is heating a pizza stone on the lowest oven rack and covering the top of the turkey with foil. Finally, simmer all of those flavorful drippings with the turkey neck, some giblets, and a little wine to make a killer gravy. And there you have it. From the test kitchen to your kitchen, a bulletproof recipe for roast turkey. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.